Hello and welcome to this webinar, 3 Dangerous Mistakes to Avoid When Rehabbing a Shoulder Injury. My name is Alex Blazewski and I'm a New Zealand registered physiotherapist with over 15 years experience and I'm going to share some very important information that you probably need to know if you have a shoulder injury or shoulder pain that you want um, treated and sorted out. So who is this webinar for? So first of all, if you've suffered a shoulder injury recently or maybe sometime in the past and it's still bugging you. If you are suffering from a weak shoulder that keeps uh, bothering you over and over again, so that means maybe sometime in the past you had a shoulder injury, you felt like you maybe made a, a recovery, but um, there's some degree of weakness that still um, persists and maybe it doesn't allow you to play sport or do your day-to-day -day things properly, So and you want to uh, finally get a solution to that. If you exercise regularly, maybe you don't even have a shoulder injury right now, but you want to avoid shoulder problems in the future. So sports like uh, tennis or golf where you use your arms a lot are more prone to shoulder injuries. So perhaps you want to um, learn about strat new strategies that you can use to avoid shoulder injuries. Or if you want to stop shoulder injuries in the future, if you want to prevent recurrence of um, past shoulder injuries, you will find information in this webinar very useful. So what makes me qualified to speak on the subject? So my name is Alex Blazewski. I graduated as a physiotherapist here in, in New Zealand, in Auckland. Um, at, uh, I graduated from AUT in 2004, so I've been a physio for over 15 years. I also did a postgraduate diploma in, sp in sports medicine from uh, University of Otago. And back in 2010, I started uh, Body Fit Physiotherapy Group. Um, so that's my own practice um, that I've been running over the last almost 10 years. And uh, in that time, I estimate that I have seen hundreds of people with shoulder injuries and shoulder problems. I also helped to co-author a book that um, came out a few months ago, How to Feel and Look Younger Naturally. So this is a book um, mainly for people over 50 who want to stay healthy for decades to come. Um, a little disclaimer, um, so this webinar is not a substitute for proper physiotherapy or medical treatment and you should always be assessed by a fully qualified health practitioner if you have um, a shoulder injury or shoulder pain. So what it means is that what I'm about to say and share with you is not a personalized advice and it doesn't, um, it doesn't replace the need to go and see a health professional. So why is it that shoulder is so prone to injury? Now, if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see um, a sh your shoulder joint from the inside, and on the right-hand side, you see, um, just for comparison, uh, a hip joint, okay? So a, sh a shoulder joint, it actually requires to uh, move around and be very flexible. Think about it, like you can move your arm, you can lift your arm right above your head, you can twist it around, you can put it behind your back, you can put it above and behind your neck. So your arm and your shoulder are very flexible and that's um, an adaptation so we can actually do things a lot easier and better in our day-to-day -day life. Now, as opposed to a hip joint, which is rather a, a more kind of a stiff joint, it doesn't have as much movement as the shoulder. So because the shoulder requires so much movement, it actually, it's it's a very unstable joint. You can see that the socket of the joint is almost flat. The So the, the cup in which the ball of the joint um, sits is very shallow. There's, there's not a lot that holds it in place. So that's why um, things like shoulder dislocations are quite common because you know it doesn't take that much force to pull the ball of the joint out of the socket. Now there is, there's a number of structures that actually help to keep it in place, such as rotator cuff muscles, but they're having to do a lot of work. That's why rotator cuff injuries are also quite common. So shoulder injuries are easy to dislocate because it's a very shallow joint and there's not, there are not that many structures that hold it in place. Now, as opposed to a hip joint, for example, which is a, a much more stable joint, and that's why there are actually a lot, hip injuries are less common than, than shoulder injuries. Um, another reason why shoulder is so prone to injuries is because of its complexity. 
Now, because it's there's so much going on around the shoulder, you, you, we use our arms on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's, it's just there's so many muscles, tendons, ligaments that attach around that area that, um, you know, it, it, the, the whole mechanism is extremely complex. Uh, when you think about a shoulder joint, it's good to think about um, a clockwork mechanism. So you can think of it, you can imagine that if one of the bearings in a clockwork mechanism um, fails or it doesn't quite, it becomes out of place, it does affect the rest of the mechanism. So if you get a little injury in one particular part of the shoulder, it will affect the other parts. And in many cases, the whole shoulder becomes dysfunctional. So that's why treating shoulder injuries, you actually need an expert who will look at it. He will assess, um, you know, different parts of the shoulder and make the right diagnosis and address those little issues. So what led me to this webinar? So as I said, my name is Alex Blaszewski, have been a physio for over 15 years, treated hundreds of shoulder injuries over the years. Um, I've also noticed that um, many shoulder injuries um, keep happening over and over again. That's, many of them are completely preventable. So quite often I will see a person uh, with a shoulder injury, I give them a rehab plan, but they don't decide not to complete it. And um, they just go back to their sport too early or they just get too busy and they end up not doing their rehab. And quite often these injuries um, come back, uh, maybe a couple of months later, maybe a couple of years later, but not getting the right uh, rehab for your shoulder injury can be quite detrimental and chances are it, it may come back and haunt you sometime in the future. So I've also witnessed and observed a huge difference between people who stick to their rehab plan and those who do not. So that's why one of the, one of the purposes of this webinar is to highlight the importance of getting a, a proper rehab program for your shoulder. So I'm just going to quickly cover what are the most, sort of most common types of shoulder injuries. Um, so Rotator cuff is definitely one of the most common ones. You might have heard of other people getting rotator cuff tears or injuries. Um, so it, it is one of the most common types of shoulder injuries. It, it's often caused by a heavy or awkward lifting. Or uh, in some cases, a person falls and puts their arm out to stop them falling. And that can also cause a tearing of the rotator cuff muscles. It is common in contact sports. So in athletes, and it's also uh, very common in people over the age of 40, especially 50. Um, not that common in teenagers and people in their 20s, but yes, definitely more common in um, older demographic. Um, it can take, depending on the severity, it can take a few months to get better. Um, this is not something that gets better in a day or two. It does take a lot of time and it does require... Uh, physiotherapy rehab um, to make it better. In some cases, when the tear, rotator cuff tear is quite severe, you may end up having surgery to repair the damage. So another type of um, shoulder injury that is extremely common, probably even more common than rotator cuff injuries, is bursitis. Now, bursitis, even though it doesn't, nothing is torn, nothing is broken, but it can still be very painful. Essentially, a bursa is a little sack of fluid. Um, I'll just point to it here. So on this picture, it's blue, okay? And this is a little sack of fluid that sits between your, what's called a chromium, which is the top of your shoulder, and your rotator cuff tendons, which is here, okay? So its main function is to separate the tendons from that bony bit at the top. If it wasn't for the bursa, the tendons would slide and they would grind against the acromion, which is the bony part. So that would cause irritation and swelling in the area. So bursa has an important role to play. Now, quite often when you have an injury, so either you lift something really heavy or uh, you fall on your arm, the ball of the shoulder joint pushes against the chromium and the bursa that sits in between, it gets squashed, okay? And that squashing causes the bursa to become inflamed, it swells up, and when it swells up, it's basically, it starts to take up even more space, and because this tunnel where it sits is quite narrow, 
um, it starts to pressure um, generate pressure on the tendon and that causes um, pain and inflammation and yeah it can be very uncomfortable um, it requires rehabilitation to restore normal um, shoulder function and uh, strength so usually it does get better with physiotherapy treatment in some cases where you may be tried a couple of months of physiotherapy treatment and it still is no better then um, we usually refer the person to a specialist who may offer you a cortisone injection to fix the problem another type of uh, shoulder injury is shoulder dislocation so this is a more traumatic type of injury um, more common in contact sports such as rugby or rugby league or uh, some people manage to do it by positioning their arm very awkwardly such as uh, putting on a wetsuit and you having to sort of reach up and out in behind your neck kind of thing and that puts uh, the shoulder in a very vulnerable position and it, you know and essentially the ball of the joint uh, you can see pops out of the socket and so it pops out of the socket and it sits uh, usually either to the front or below the, the socket. As you can imagine, very, very painful. Uh, and uh, you basically need someone, a medical person, to reduce or pop it back in. Okay, so um, can be also quite a painful procedure. Uh, the, the longer you wait, the more painful it is to pop it back in. And once you do manage to pop it back in, you usually need an x-ray to make sure you haven't chipped any bones you haven't broken any bones um, when you when you dislocated the shoulder so that's a must and now once you dislocate it you do need post um, post injury rehab to make sure that your muscles are strong enough to keep the ball in the socket so it doesn't happen again and now usually the rule of thumb is if it happens three times in your life in your lifetime you will need surgery to um, repair the damage so it doesn't keep happening over and over again. So this x-ray demonstrates someone with a shoulder dislocation. Um, you can see the ball of the joint sits below the cavity. So the cavity is here. This, the ball of the joint should be sitting in that cavity. Instead, it popped out and it sits below the cavity. Okay, so this would be very painful. And um, another type of injury is a frozen shoulder. So uh, this is quite different from other types of shoulder injuries. Uh, frozen shoulder almost exclusively affects people from the ages of 40 to 60 or 65. And uh, happens more, common, uh, more, more often to women than men. Okay? Also more common pe with people uh, with diabetes. Now it may be triggered by a minor uh, injury such as lifting a grocery bag or something else or sometimes it just it is absolutely nothing no trigger no cause it just happens so all of a sudden your shoulder starts to become painful uh, you tend to especially in the first two months you start to experience um, persistent and constant ache and throbbing so no matter what you do even if you slice still it aches anyway so that's a very um, sort of characteristic feature of a frozen shoulder pain is just unrelenting at constant 24 7 okay um it's um it, it can take a long time to get better it, anywhere from one to two years generally um it you know easily can take a couple of years to um fully get better but it does eventually get better now quite often a cortisone injection into the joint can help to speed things up so that's why you do need to see a health professional a physio or a doctor to uh, diagnose it properly and uh, receive the right treatment to uh, help you recover quicker. So what are the three common mistakes that people make uh, when they're trying to rehab their shoulder injury? So the three things we're going to cover is not getting a diagnosis, the right diagnosis from a health professional. Number two is keeping the arm still or in a sling when it may need to be mobilized so quite often we choose you know without the right diagnosis we assume that because the arm is painful we should keep it still but quite often that's not the case and the third is not addressing the muscle imbalances and deficiencies around the shoulder girdle so mistake number one not getting the right diagnosis um, and not seeing a health professional about your shoulder injury 
So I'll give you a little study here um, that proves that not getting the right treatment can actually be very detrimental for your for your recovery. So um, this one study that was done in 2011, they they followed uh, people with a full thickness rotator cuff tears over a two to three years term, and what they found is that left untreated. Um, about half of these people, 49%, uh, the size of their tear actually increased. So their condition got worse without the right medical treatment. So that just highlights that if you have a shoulder injury, you do need to see a, um, a health professional to see if you need to do something about it to get it fixed. And another study that's a different study pretty much follows the same advice and it tells you, you know, tells you exactly the same thing. Uh, so people with uh, partial thickness rotator cuff tears, which means milder tears, left untreated, progressed to a full thickness or severe uh, rotator cuff tears over a period of two years. So again, very important, get the proper medical advice and get the right treatment. Otherwise, um, your injury can get worse. Another reason why you want to see a doctor or physio uh, particularly if you had a traumatic event, so maybe you had a bad fall or um, if you are sort of over 50 years of age or you had a car accident, um, and particularly if there's a lot of pain around the shoulder, uh, sometimes you may actually get a fracture of the shoulder joint. So in this case, you can see on the picture on the right-hand side, um, there's a number of cracks um, around the neck of the humerus, which is your arm bone, and that would be very painful and probably would need some surgical involvement to get it fixed. So don't just leave things. Don't assume that things will just get better by themselves uh, because quite often you actually need to see someone about your shoulder injury. Mistake number two, keeping the arm still or in a sling when it may need to be moved or mobilized. So some injuries such as fractures or bad AC joint injuries actually do need to be immobilized. So you really need to know what's wrong with your arm before you make that decision, okay? But in other cases, moving your arm is going to help you recover quicker, okay? And regain the lost mobility. So keeping your shoulder immobilized in a sling for long periods of time can actually be detrimental and may slow down your recovery times, okay? so. These are some of the conditions or, in, or injuries that actually do better with uh, movements. So if you move your arm early, it will actually help you recover quicker. So if you have a mild rotator cuff injury, if you have a frozen shoulder, or in many cases, um, if after a certain period of time after surgery, you are actually advised to keep your arm moving so it doesn't stiffen up even more. So in some cases, in many cases, you actually need to keep your arm moving rather than keep it still. But you don't know um, until you have a proper diagnosis. All right, so, and mistake number three, uh, not addressing the muscle imbalances and deficiencies around the shoulder girdle. So as you can see, the shoulder is a very complex uh, mechanism, as I highlighted before. A number of muscles attached around the shoulder girdle. There are rotator cuff muscles, there's a number of muscles on the front, around the chest, and particularly on the back, um, you've got shoulder blade, which is around this area here. Uh, it's in, on this picture on the right hand side, it's mostly covered by the trapezius muscle. But why it's important is because um, around the shoulder blade, uh, you actually have a number of muscles that control the position of the shoulder blade. And quite often when you have a shoulder injury, these, some of these muscles become weaker. And um, if that happens, you actually, as part of your rehab, you need to address those weaknesses. It's very important because your arm attaches to your shoulder blade. If your shoulder blade is weak or is not controlled properly, it will have an effect on your recovery. So to explain you a little bit better what, um, how important shoulder blade is for your arm function, uh, think of a house being built on a foundation. So if the foundation is weak or is, um, you know, dysfunctional, the no matter how well you design your house, it will eventually lean sideways and it will 
uh, it, you know, the house will basically break because the foundation wasn't um, done properly. Okay, so um, shoulder blade is essentially your foundation because your whole arm attaches to your shoulder blade. If your shoulder blade is not positioned correctly, if your if the muscles around the shoulder blade are weak, then it will affect uh, the, your recovery from your shoulder injury. Okay, so that's why it's very important to address all the deficiencies around the shoulder blade. And that's why when you come for um, an assessment at body fit physiotherapy, we always check, um, you know, your shoulder blade for uh, the right alignment and potentially for any kind of muscle weaknesses around that area. So on this picture here, you can see someone with a, what's called a winging. Okay, so that's when one of the muscles that controls the position of the shoulder blade is weak. In this particular case, it's called serratus anterior. So that's one of the muscles that help to keep the shoulder blade um, close to your chest wall. But in this case, because it's weak, the shoulder blade comes off the chest wall. And that's why you have this winging effect. Okay, So in this case, um, this person needs to strengthen their serratus anterior muscle for the recovery to be effective. Otherwise, it will take a lot longer or he may not actually recover completely at all. Okay, so addressing those deficiencies around the shoulder blade is very, very important. All right, so we've just covered uh, the three common mistakes that people make uh, when they try to recover from a shoulder injury. So not getting the right diagnosis, keeping the arm still when it doesn't need to be kept still, and not addressing the muscle imbalances and deficiencies around the shoulder girdle. Now, I've given you a lot of information over the last uh, 25 minutes, half an hour. Um, so it might be quite confusing because, you know, if you don't have the proper medical uh, training, you might find some of the information a little bit hard to digest. And if you like some help with clarifying what to do about fixing your shoulder injury, you may want to seek um, qualified uh, health professional advice. Also, you may want a solid plan of action to minimize the risk of complications and re-injury in the future. If that's the case, you're more than welcome to um, come and um, ask, um, you know, get expert physio advice. Um, you can, we, we welcome you to have a, a free shoulder assessment at one of our clinics. Uh, so Body Fit Physiotherapy Group, uh, we have two clinics, one in Howick uh, at the Howick Recreation Center, one in Pakaranga. Uh, so we have plenty of parking, uh, very convenient locations, easy to find. Um, so basically what we're offering is a 20-minute free um, shoulder assessment. In that time, we, we're going to have a look at your shoulder. We'll tell you uh, what's going on, what the story is, what you can do to help yourself. If need be, we'll send you for x-rays or ultrasound scans. So we can um, determine exactly what, what is going on. So this is completely free. Um, so there's no risk involved for you. Um, you know, we'll, we'll basically have a look at it, tell you what's going on, tell you what you need to do if you need any treatment. Uh, so to book your uh, free shoulder assessment, just give us a call on 0800 00 2723. Or you can alternatively, if you prefer, you can book your free shoulder assessment online at uh, bodyfitphysio.co.nz forward slash free shoulder exam. Okay, so don't hesitate. Like I said, it's a, it's a free assessment. Um, you've got nothing to lose. But very often you actually do need to have a proper diagnosis so you know what to do. And if you need any medical intervention, um, sooner rather than later. So um, I hope you've uh, benefited from the information you've um, um, that I've presented over the last few um, half an hour. Uh, if you have any questions, just give us a call on the same number and I'll be happy to help. All right. Uh, hope to hear from you soon. Okay. Bye for now.